age 17, you were awarded as a, as a second position of Barber of the Year in Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. Age 17. Age 19. Age 19. Yeah, age At 19. age 22, mm -hmm. you went back and you claimed the full title as Barber of the Year in Ireland. Am I right in saying Wait, that? Wait, no. So Sorry, say that again. So 20, yeah. I was named... Barber of the Year. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Before that, I didn't didn't do any other. Oh. Those, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Cool. Cool, man. And um, voted, I think, on something with with regards to Barber Magazine as well. Yes. What was that Barber Magazine? It's been a while. Yeah, now. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it was. What was it? Let me see here. Um, best Education Finalist from Barber Modern Barber Magazine ah. in 2020. Okay. Yeah. So. So many awards that you can't keep track. <laughs> Yeah, so when I was 17, what it yeah. was is I actually began my career hairdressing. Oh, okay, fantastic. Um, so that competition was to do with hairdressing. Oh, okay. Um, and I came second in the adult uh, section yeah. when yeah. I was 17. Oh, so nice. not even the juniors, I went straight in. Wow. Um, and yeah, got second place. So your fundamental, well, your your core and, and, and your foundations are hairdressing. So you started off as a hairdresser. Yeah, so I'm originally from Bournemouth. Okay. Um, and I began my career as a hairdresser. Yeah. So I started off as an apprenticeship, you know, yeah. one day a week at college, mm -hmm. four or five days in the salon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I got in there, I realized that to cut women's hair, yeah. it's going to take me a long time. Yeah. Like I'm probably not actually going to be running a clientele for a year, two years. Is that, is that because you goes. feel it's a bit more complicated? For sure. I mean, to, to start off with, I would say that, you know, if you're cutting a bob, or something yeah. like that it has to be so precise yeah you know and this is like 11 years ago so at this point was men's hairdressing was a lot of like clipper over comb you know like the traditional Very style traditional. you know yes, yeah of course so there was only one person in the hairdressers that actually enjoyed doing men's hair so i about six weeks into my apprenticeship kind of found this out mm. and i went to my boss and i said i can cut men's hair okay and they said since when when can you cut men's hair uh and i said no no no. i've been cutting my friend's hair for about eight weeks ten weeks now yeah. and i said I'm, I'm good i can do it i can do it and uh they said okay well get one of your friends in and you can cut their hair okay and at this point i hadn't cut anybody's hair right. okay i just okay. kind yeah, of blagging it, yeah basically. blagging it basically <laughs> so does I went, he know this now uh probably not to be <laughs> honest but yeah so i done uh a course on YouTube, you mm -hmm. know, just looking through all the yeah. barbering techniques As on you YouTube. Do. Loads of people will learn, you know, self-taught like that. Hundred um, percent. And I cut one of my friends' hair. Yeah. So it's first go, and it came out all right. You know, it's just a grade one on the side, mm -hmm. short on the top, mm -hmm. no problem. So I got him in, um, and I'd done his hair two weeks later in the shop. Right. And it looked great. And okay, the guy good. came came through it. He looked through it. He said, "Yeah, yeah, good, good." He said, "Okay, cool. We'll start looking." looking uh, Men so it started to me. become a unisex salon because of because of that. So wow. and very very quickly it went from you know one haircut every yeah. day to yeah. four or five haircuts repeatedly in wow. the in the hairdressers. That's really really good. Um, something they hadn't had before. You know it was nice. it was normally like one gent to every ten ladies haircuts yeah. colors. Do you know what I mean? Yeah yeah. So, of course. How long have you been cutting men's hair for now? Including that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it because so, I guess the yeah you were pretty much a full time barber in a unisex salon now. Yeah, so including that, eleven years, eleven wow. years. So I started when I was sixteen. Yeah, I'm um, twenty seven now. So okay, yeah. Now you've worked with some really really big brands, um, and now you're more solo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I've heard that there's something brewing with A O N O. Yep. So. In terms of obviously your education, you provide education, you're a bit more solo on that. Mm -hmm. um, you're a one-man team. Um, tell us a bit more about... Yeah, so since I left my previous company, yeah. um, you know, I was still putting out some work on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and about three years ago, um, yeah, probably about three and a half years ago, four years ago mm -hmm. now, actually, um, Joe Leach from Ireland got in contact with me. Yeah. Um, this is yeah. just as I'd left my previous workplace. And he said, would you mind coming over and, and doing two days with our staff? Um, right. So I said, yeah, no problem. So it literally, from there, spiraled. Um, and that's when MJ Education, as you see now. So you see this this MJ Education, because I have a tremendous amount of respect for yourself and, and your education. Now, you don't actually know this, but, well, I, I messaged you about three years ago. Um, 
and I was in desperate, urgent need of help in terms of my cutting abilities. Um, I messaged you, um, you said, yeah, sure, you know, list me a couple of things as, as to what you'd like to learn and I'll come down. I think you ended up doing three, four, five days, three days? I think it was four days. Four days yeah. of just pure one-to-one. Mm. And um, I took I took a lot of things from that. So you basically, at the end of the day, you know, we spoke on, on, on Messenger. You quoted me a price which was super, super fair. Um, I was really, really happy about that, you know, considering I was getting one-to-one education. It's fantastic. Um, and what I found about your education was my um, my foundation was in was in tatters. It was just it was just completely broken in bits. I jumped from shop to shop. Um, I, I had no core foundations in what I knew what I was doing. If if that makes sense, I didn't have like this ethos or or something to go by. And with your education, I found that you know you teach me how to pull out a section, and I'd pull out the section, and I'd start cutting. You know, a couple of sections in. You know, I I'd try a small talk you you know, like what you got going over the weekend, so on and so forth. And I'd, as I'd pull out my section and cut, you know, I'd look over and say, you know, so what are you doing over the weekend? And I'd drop the section. And you used to go, whoa, 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 you know, bring it back up, you know, yeah. make sure you, the tension's correct. And um, it, it was like this, this, this regiment that you had. It was very, very disciplined mm. in terms of how you taught. And, and I understood that and I stopped asking, you know, the small talk questions um, and left that for lunch. <laughs> <clears throat> now what I'm trying to say is after you'd left you know after we did our four days together I spent uh, the next three to six months you, I, I never actually messaged you again to you know keep you updated yeah. so it's been a while since we've actually spoken I spent the next three to six months I had already built up a bit of a clientele they were good with me so I didn't really need to talk to them and conversate with them um, and what I did was I just really smashed out with full discipline, almost no conversation with my clients for the next three to six months until I felt and I believed that I, I turned into this extremely confident and talented barber. Well, extreme to an extent. There's there's, there's different levels to extreme. No, no, I think you're, you're right in saying that, you know, it's, so, it's within yourself. Thank you. <clears throat> and, um, and for the next three to six months, I really, really learned... Um, and kept myself disciplined in how to cut hair. After that period, once I felt I'd got really, really good, I then started implementing all the customer service techniques that you'd helped me build in that. You know, you, we had the you know, client consultation and things like that and how to keep client retention. Mm. And then after that six month period and I started implementing that customer service, I flew. Mm. So thank you very much, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I, um, I don't, I don't think I actually, you know, got back in touch with you and told you just how much of an impact you, you, you know, yourself mm. and your education has had on my career. No, oh, well, I mean, firstly, I'm really, really glad to hear that because I mean, I get satisfaction out, out of that. <laughs> yeah, right? out of that. Um, so yeah, for me, that's that's the main purpose of why I wanted to push the education and why, why I teach is because you know I want to see people thrive from their career. Mm. Um, so uh, how how do you go about building, you know, uh, and, and developing a curriculum that helped me excel? And I no doubt, you know, you've helped many many others excel. Mm. Um, who have taken on what you've taught them. How do you go about developing something without sharing your secret ingredient, of course? Yeah. Because <clears throat> what we need to understand is there's barbers that have been out, you know, out there doing it for, for, for decades, mm. but yet are not qualified in themselves to be able to go out, you know, charge a price and say, look, you know, I'll come around and, and help you do, you know, and offer you one-to-ones. How do you go about developing something of the sort? Good. Okay. Great question. So firstly, I would say, I think to learn in general, it's really important to have a universal terminology around yeah. hairdressing, around barbering. Hairdressing included. Included. That's, but, a, that's an important factor. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Because I mean, all, all the techniques that I probably taught you mm -hmm. have come from, you know, Sassoon. Yeah, yeah. They've come and, from and the big brands all, all, as well. all these yeah, big hairdressing brands. Of course. Um, and basically, all I've done is, is combined it with not recreating the wheel. No, just just combining it, combining it, and trying to make it better. You know, mm -hmm. always trying to improve it. Um, you know, everything I've learned from hairdressing, 
from Barbaroom. Mm -hmm. I've kind of brought it together. Um, but the main purpose was to make it almost an easy to understand function that would all, all fit into a three easy, easy, simple sections, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, so everything that, you know, you learn on that course on the five days would revert back to nine different parts of cutting. Okay, fantastic. Um, and I think it's really important to have that one thing that you can say, you know, when somebody does something, there's always a reason behind it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I can almost take them back. Like what I've got in, for instance, in my ebook, obviously it's not as explained as what I would do in a, of course. a normal course. Of course. But everything can go back to that. You know, every part of haircutting yeah. is in that book. Yeah, and, and you speak about, now there's so many things I want to talk about. In your ebook, you mentioned something about the golden hours. Mm -hmm. Because, bro, you know, as, as barbers, fuck, man, we do some really long hours. It really, really takes it out of us. So tell us a little bit more about these golden hours that you talk about in your ebook. Yeah, cool. So these actually came from a time where I had just moved to Men's Spire at the time. Yeah. And I was behind all of the, the stylists in there. You know, I was I was behind on um, knowledge. You know, as, as, as talented and, and yeah, as, lacking knowledge. Exactly, lacking knowledge. I was younger, mm -hmm. um, but I was hungry. Right. Um, so these are normally the hours that I would spend in the gym in the morning. You know, yeah. I'd normally wake up at six o'clock, go to the gym for an hour, two hours, whatever. I would do that five days a week. But instead what I'd done is I chose to three days a week I would wake up an hour earlier than that, so I'd wake up at five, mm -hmm. and I would literally lay in my bed. Yeah. I'd put a hairdressing video on. Right. I'd get my notepad, get a coffee, and I would sit there and I would write down what was going on in the videos. Right. So not even just watch the videos, you know, no, because no, otherwise it's it. no, one ear, in one, one, in one ear a out the other. Absolutely. So yeah, I would I would literally sit there and I would jot down whatever's going on, um, things that they said that I liked. And that, that for me was the hours where I learned to actually teach. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was just putting into practice. I had all the evidence there because exactly. I'd taken the hours out of my day to learn about something. Now, in terms of, you see, if you want to excel your career in barbering, do you feel that it's necessary to, to, to branch out into hairdressing as well? Now I know that you know you're a precision-based cutter. Mm. You know you class yourself more as a, a you know a men's hairdresser. Would you say as a, as opposed to a male barber? How would you consider that? So obviously it's just a, a job title, really yeah. a role title. Um, yeah. a, a barber. Yeah. What I am, you yeah. know, I cut men's hair. Yeah. So would I would I refer to myself as a barber? Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like people try to avoid that because the whole barber term was. It's almost a bit behind, yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas now we're moving into this era of you know like pre precision based cutting and so on and so forth. So, do you feel like it's 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 important to bra branch out into hairdressing as well? To do you feel like that that can bring someone a bit more of an extensive skill set to bring into men's men men's based you know, precision cutting and to, to be honest, now no. Yeah. Okay. You've got to think. I started eleven years ago, mm -hmm. um, and this whole collaboration of you know, the kind of hairdressing, haircut inside, yeah. linked with the traditional barber and wasn't around. Right. So I had to go go out and find it. Like I had to literally go out and watch these videos and go to hairdressing education brands so that I could bring it over to barbering, Fantastic. you know. Yeah. Um, whereas nowadays, um, as you know, there's yeah. so many education platforms around. Um, I know a few of them are, are a lot more kind of barber, yeah. Three, if you want to call it that. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas mine are very much, you know, uh, like you said, precision haircutting yeah. um, at its finest. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think because of people like yourself and you know the education that you provide and, and other you know educational centers and people that provide you know education like yourself, I think that the barbering industry now, from a point of education, from a point of um, networking with one another has never been more vivid and more positive and more alive. And I think that's partly down to, to you know, people like yourself, you know, people like Gary, um, who's, who's doing all these, you know, barber bashes and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, that's such you know, a positive. But, you know, tell me a little bit, bro, you know, aside from your education and, and the education that you provide, what, what else is it that you're up to? Cool. So... As we know, we've been through a pandemic. Yeah. So the yeah. education actually slowed down a lot. Yeah. Um, 
So I went for naturally. Went, it wasn't just education. It was. It was everything. Yeah, it was yeah. everything. Um, but people always need haircuts, right? Mm -hmm. So it started picking up. So the education, you know, the last month, two months, it's been a bit, lot better. We started to, you know, get back into it, and we're moving people forward again. Um, so I'm I'm giving about a day a week to education, but the rest of my time, it's spent. I've got two days in Knightsbridge in London. Okay, yeah. with with AONO. Fantastic. Um, who I've recently gone into business with. So we've got the shop. Yeah, thank you. So we've got the shop down in Knightsbridge. Okay. Inside Harvey Nichols on the menswear floor. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a really cool layout, a cool I, spot. I would assume that you you do some sort of um, higher end, you know, sort of haircuts and services and charge a little bit more. Does that come with, you know, celebrities that come in there as well, would you say? Yeah, of course. You, yeah. you know, you, you get every walk of life almost yeah. um but yeah like you said like it's it's a lot more expensive for a haircut in there yeah you get the option of having a lot more time to give the haircut as well and give the service of course um so yeah it, it goes in hand, hand in hand really is there any pressure in terms of offering what kind of you know what kind of barbershops have you worked in because the majority of my career has been you know 12 pound 50 haircuts mm. i'm not gonna lie yeah um and then after your education i actually started uh, building, you know, really, really good clientele, fantastic service, and I started charging thirty, you know, forty pound a haircut in, in some cases. Um, towards the end of my career, on you know, full time shop floor before I took the academy on. Mm. So, do you feel like there's added pressure, you know, working in such salons that you would consider as a bit more, you know, higher end, if you like? Of course. Well, I wouldn't. Okay. Because good. obviously I, I, I teach, this is yeah. this is literally what I do, this is what I thrive on. Yeah. Um, so, and it's always been my personality that almost nothing is too big. I can, I can literally do anything. Um, mm -hmm. And if I do fail once, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll come back again. Um, whereas some people, I mean, recently I've been looking for a barber and the first question I got from four different people um, was how much experience do I need to, to be in there? Right. It's like they're doubting themselves immediately. So my question back to them was, do you think you can do it? Right. Do you, th do you think you can run a clientele? Okay. So you see, this is a good point, bro, because you've worked with, you know, some really, really popular brands, as you say, you know, AONO in Knightsbridge, you mm -hmm. know, in Harvey Nichols, you know, Men's Buyer. These are some really, really great, um, big brands. Uh, how do you get your, your foot in the door with such brands? Cool. No, because there's going to be loads of people out there that want to do, and replicate something that you've done mm -hmm. um, and, and they want to work with you know bigger brands and, and less not that there's anything wrong with you know local high street barber shops but they want to be you know with people with barbers that are a little bit more savvy yeah and and they want to you know have this constant growth so how how would you go about putting your foot in the door especially when you feel like you doubt yourself mm. because i understand that now you know, you're really, really good. Mm. But maybe at the time when you joined Menspire, you've, again, you said you had a lack of knowledge and so on and so forth. How do you, you know, get your foot in Of course. Door? So I knew I could do it all along. That was the thing, you know. Oh, right. I, okay. so I it knew, comes from within. I knew I could do it. Right. Um, but I knew I wasn't there yet. Yeah. So the first thing I had to do was actually, like you said, get my foot in the door. So how did I do that? I simply messaged the owner mm -hmm. and I said, can I come down? Yeah. I'll sweep the floors. Yeah. I'll do what I need to do. Okay. I'll, Even though I'll, you can cut hair, I, had a, I was I owned a shop at this point. Oh wow! I was nineteen years old. Oh, I owned mate. a shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, so that shop. changes the game. Yeah. So you're willing to sacrifice. Yeah. Every movement forward, right? There's been a fall before it, and yeah. I'm talking like when I joined Menspire, mm -hmm. um, it, it was a fall. Like it, it was hard because I've gone from you know having no money, yeah, opening a shop, doing well. Well, no, it took a long time to do well though. Oh, you know, I was still young at that point. Mate, I, was I know. Still young. So it took a long time. I built it up. I got it to a point where it was, you know, two people in there, me and somebody else. Yeah. And we were doing the right numbers and everything. Um, and at that point, I realized this isn't enough for me. Mm -hmm. Being in a small town, small village on the back end of Bournemouth. Right. It, it wasn't for me. I wanted more. Um, so I actually met, I, I'd done a course with Menspire at that point. Mm -hmm. And I messaged Josh afterwards and I said to him, you know, can I, can I come up and, and like do a day, I'll just sweep the floors or do whatever. And he just said, yeah, come up, bring your tools and, and we'll see. Um, and at this point I was thinking about joining Glassbox in Toronto, another right. great, great brand. Yeah, you know. mate, they're incredible. Yeah. Incredible from what I've seen on social media. So on the course, actually on the Men's Bio course, I was actually with uh, Pete and Dylan 
at the time you were, ah. were the owners of Glassbox. Yes, so of course. we got into a conversation and they said, well, why don't you come across? Um, so that was my original plan. Okay, well, to go to Canada? To go to Canada, no yeah. No way. Yeah. So did, I, you, did you end up going in the end and visiting the boys? Or? Do, do you know what? I did go, but four years later on, and I went to teach rather than to actually be a barber. But well, that's, that's, the, I, that's how it plays out. I didn't go to them. No, I ended up actually taking a job at Menspire instead. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, having the commitment, I guess from an owner now, if, if somebody's got the commitment to come in and say, you know, I'll take a step back and I'll push this forward, you know, and I, I was... I was ready to build up. I was ready to get busy at that place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So it's not just about, you know, saying, you know, how much experience do I need? It's more about, you know, letting them know that I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, X, Y, and Z, what I've worked for, um, to come in and, 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 and be good. And Yeah, 100%. I mean, as, as an owner, what, what would you look for? Mate, yeah, uh, well, first things first, I don't hire off of CVs. Mm -hmm. Um I generally just tend to, you know, you know, phone up applicants. Um, I'm, I, I state it clearly wherever I'm advertising, um, you know, whether it be word of mouth, you know, through colleagues and industry friends, or whether it be online, you know, no CVs required. I just, I hate, I hate CVs. Um, but you know, the whole reason as to why I became a barber in the first place was because I worked retail, mm. and one thing that I found that I hated in retail was not that my um, my skills or you know not that it wasn't valued by my management or anyone above me it was that it wasn't valued by you know customers yeah whereas when i when i went to a barber i felt like barbers were one of the you know most respected members of the community so that's why i kind of got into barbering but i have this thing now you know against retail personally you know that i just really really dislike and i, I like to do things very very differently um but the one thing that i like to look for a couple of things that I like to look for is just general passion, um, the drive, experience is, you know, not really necessary. But, you know, when you say people, you know, when you see ads, they say, you know, three years experience minimum required. No, nope. of course. It's just, yeah. it's just not how I do things, bro, man. It's just, you can't, you know, I, I mate, we can pick out a barber that's, you mm -hmm. know, three years of experience and we can pick out one of our students that's finished you know, our courses, a couple of, you know, not all of them are like this, yeah. but, you know, a very, very savvy student that finished, you know, six, eight, nine months ago and, and we'll, we'll beat him in, in, in most angles. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you know, face to face, you know, value mm. and, 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 and seeing what they're about like that. That's how I like to hire personally. Well, this is the thing, you know, you look back on a younger you, mm. um, I would back myself mm -hmm. over a lot of barbers that have been cut in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Yeah. You know what I mean, so when that experience things comes up on a on a job role, three years experience needed, it's like, well, me at six months. Was 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 him at three years? Not necessarily, but by three years, imagine where that one person's gonna be. Of course. And that, I think that's more important. You know, I <coughs> I always say, you know, if I if I fall, mm -hmm. I'd rather fall forwards. And I feel like if you take somebody on that's hungry, that's young, yeah, even if they do fall, yeah. They're gonna fall forward. They're of gonna course. they're gonna move forwards with yeah, that. mate. And I totally I totally agree with that. That's 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 wicked. Now, in terms of um, getting your foot in the door with with um, events, things like Barber Bash, mm. Great British Barber Bash. Shout out to Gary. Um, How do you go about getting your foot in the door with that? Is that like sort this sort of like rep thing? You know that you have to kind of like build like a, a, a like a street cred yeah. if you like. Or is it, you know, you, you use social media to your advantage and, and and you kind of, you know, ask if you can attend. How does that all work? You know, because there's going to be loads of people out there that that want to get into this. Because a lot of people think that barbers, you know, you cut the hair just behind a chair and that's it. It's, it's not. It's yeah. Far more to it. So if you want to explore that avenue, how do you go about doing so? Zinni, I'll ask you the question. What What is the first thing somebody looks at when they see you as a barber? Social media, bro. Instagram. Social media. How would you get in contact with that person? Instagram. Instagram, right? Unless you actually see them in person. Yeah. And if you see them in person, they have no idea who you are without looking at a portfolio. Yeah. So like Instagram is the portfolio now. Absolutely. Um, and at that point of, you know, starting with the Barber Bash and yeah. I think just before that, I went over and done a show in Toronto as well in Canada. Fantastic. Um, and it was the same thing. How, how did they know about me? And it was, it was all through social media. It was through the portfolio that you're building. Yeah. 
Um, and this is actually a question that I've been asked quite a few times by young aspiring barbers. Exactly. That want to come yeah, up. I know because we get that from students all the time. And People I, love it. I tell them the same thing. Build your Instagram. Yeah. Build your portfolio. Yeah. And don't stop. Keep posting. Wake up hungry every single day. Like yeah. I, I know a, f a few barbers at the moment that keep saying to me, oh, they want to do this, they want to do that. And it's like, okay, cool. For two weeks, there'll be nonstop posting on Instagram. And then it stops. And then it stops for a month. And it's then best it to just upload again. once a week constantly for the whole year. I think you've got to be more than that. Well, it, it, generally, you, you want to keep seeing that name pop up. Of course. Because, yeah. uh, you know, two weeks of posting and then a, a year of not posting, well, not a year, but yeah. it fades out. It, you lose the momentum. 100%. Like, look, I've done it. I, I took a, a six-month break from Instagram because I was doing other things. I was looking into other things. I had a few things going on. Yeah. Um... And initially, when I come back, you know, you upload a picture and your likes have gone down. Yeah. You know, the amount you're getting, the, the amount engagement. of views you're getting, the engagement goes down. Um, so it takes it takes a minute to get all that back up. Um, and people to actually, you know, you've fallen off the, the face of the planet to some people because, like, you're not on Instagram. And that's all. That's where they see you, you know. Yeah. So it, it's just keeping that going. You know, if you're up every day, I always say to people, a couple of Instagram stories a day, mm -hmm. one post a day. Yeah. See where you are in two years. And, and, and is that how you'd say, you know, you'd go about, you know, creating a bit of a following as well? You know, how, how do you grow that? Is that, again, is that just consistency? Because I feel like it's a little bit more than just consistency. I feel like you have to engage with other people. Of course. And, and that's a lot of engagement to do. So it becomes a lifestyle because I, I wouldn't say that I'm particularly looking at other people's posts all the time. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I don't really contact that many people through Instagram unless, you know, there's something to be done together. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's more of focusing on yourself, building your skills, and then building your brand. And, and, and obviously capturing that on your portfolio as well. Of course. If you look, you can spend nine to five in the barber shop, you can do a few haircuts, and you can not do any of that. Mm -hmm. That's no problem. That's great. You know, if, if that's what you want to do, that, that's absolutely fine. You know, you can have a really good career out of that. You can build up clients from word of mouth, and, yeah. and that's fine. If you do want to go onto the stage, you do want to do education, you want to, you want to get involved in those things, then really you've got to be doing, like I said, the, the two hours before work, the golden hours. Yeah. Um, and then you've, you've got to be learning. You know, you've got to be always pushing your skills. Um, and then you've got to be also showing it as well. You yeah. know, there's nothing better to see than somebody's journey. No, of course. Yeah, you, you, you're totally right about that. Now, in terms of your education, because um, it's not just it's not just like workshops that you provide. Mm. It's a little bit more extensive. You know, you've got an ebook, you've got online courses. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about about that because there's there's a bit of an infrastructure. We're we're, we're you know in the midst of, of, of creating a, a, a platform, mm -hmm. a student portal, if you like, for our students, and we're we're trying to get these tutorials going. Man, it's expensive. Number one it is. Um, yeah. and and it's very very time consuming yeah so it's tricky how are they going yeah they're going all right but she's taking a lot out of me yeah, yeah. It, it's, you know you've got to be on point for those videos you've got to try and get <clears throat> the angles right and so on and so forth you want to capture that on video so i mean those There's videos. Been times where i literally record the video <laughs> and my hands have been in front of the whole the whole you know panel that i'm working on the whole yeah. time and yeah. i won't go back you've got to redo it yeah but the hair's already gone by that point <laughs> Yeah, you've got to yeah. find someone else or you've got to wait another two, four weeks because you don't want someone with like a fresh fade in. Yeah, cool. So I'll, I'll talk about the videos first. So I've got 10 videos, uh, sorry, five videos yes. on my website. Yeah. Um, I would say each video took me probably about 12 hours per video to wow. shoot and then do the voiceover, help recreate. It probably took about 12 hours per video. Okay, so it's a lot of time. and. It's the concentration that goes with that. You know, yes. if you're trying to focus on a haircut for as much as you can for three hours, okay, then you've got to do the, it's a lot. But we've got five videos there that are the, what I would call the fundamentals of what you would see coming to the barbershop. Yeah. So we've got a mid-length haircut. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a mid-length haircut with a taper. Yeah. And we've got three shorter haircuts. Yeah. So it's, it's really, what my education is about is bringing that advanced cut in and combining it with something, you know, it's almost a hybrid that you can use in the salon. Sure. Um, that's that's really what I've been focusing on for the whole stint of my education, wow. um, is creating a hybrid that's efficient to be able to use in the barbershop. 
Um, so yeah, so we've got that. We've got the the website with the five videos on. Yeah. And I've also got the ebook. So the ebook I'd actually been taking, it probably took me about a year to write on and off. Um, really? Because I had to keep going back to it. Well, it, it's not easy writing, you know, writing it. Yeah. I, I mean, a lot of other people would have done it, right? Yeah. So I, I, at that point, I don't, I didn't know of anybody else in the barber industry that had written an ebook. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I was really proud to, to release that. Wow. Um, but yeah, so it took me a year to write and it started off at 300 pages. Uh, now we went into lockdown and I thought, you know what, I've got to strip this down because I said there's 300 pages in there yeah. and it was too much. Like, you know, it, it would make your head explode, like right, the amount yeah. of information in there and how long it was and everything else. So basically I put it into, I think it was about 70 pages in the end. Yes. Um, really simple to read. You know, you can look over it. And like I said, you, you can literally put it on your desk when you're cutting hair and you can flick back to it. And there's certain parts of, you know, looking at hair not as a whole but breaking it down into sections and, yes. and head placement and whatnot and it, it all kind of revolves around what's in the ebook so yeah, i totally hear that That's yeah good and how did how did the release of that ebook go yeah really good yeah. so i mean strong? at that point i didn't actually have the website set up okay so what i was doing is i was having people message me if they wanted the ebook. See, that's that's one thing i want to quickly touch on people feel like they need to have this extensive infrastructure no in place, all you've got to do is really just take that first step. Yeah. Um, and, and things, obviously it's difficult without the infrastructure, but things start to fall into place and, and you start to build on that momentum. Of course. Um, but but even still with the education, um, a lot of people come through Instagram. Yeah. They didn't. They, they don't even click on my bio to, to see in a, the website, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all come through Instagram. Um, I would say like 10% come through the website first. So it's like that infrastructure, is it that important still? Yeah, Do you know I what I mean? I see, I see, I see exactly Instagram's now pushing onto, and I think it's such a big thing within our industry. When you when you teach people, um, I, I know you was teaching a lot more pre-COVID mm -hmm. than now. What what common what common sort of things do you find that people struggle with or, or come to you in the first place for what what particular reasons? So I would say the main one yeah. is what I would call weight distribution. Um, so it's that section between the sides and the yeah. top yeah. that either sticks out too much or is too in yes. or it's not balancing the top. There's just yeah. no balance to the haircuts. Right. So the first thing I do when I either take a one-to-one -one or a group session is I talk about our analysis. Okay. And I break this down into two sections. I break it down into our verbal and our yeah. visual. Yes. The verbal, obviously, is our consultation. What That's another part of, of the course. Yes, I won't of go course. into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I will talk about is the visual. So the visual is literally everything we can see. And I always say to people, okay, what, what can you see about the haircut right now? And they all go, uh, I shape. remember you doing this to me. Head shape? What, what, what was the first thing you said? Do you remember? It was, uh, I was picking out things that were wrong with it, trying to pick things that were wrong with it, like the crown sticking up or of course. the head shape or just stuff like that. What were all things? We're all parts of it. Yes. But it's not the whole picture. What no. we were literally looking at is how is the weight below your occipital bone? How is it above? Do you know what I mean? How, where is it you, on the coronal? You told me what parts do we like? Mm -hmm. and what parts, you know, what, what parts do we want to keep? And what parts do we not, not want to keep? Yeah. And, you know, right. and, then, and then I started pointing things out, like the length, is fine we need to work with the length we don't want to go any shorter the length is fine and then you go okay great but where else is long and then you know i start pointing it out so yeah i totally get it i totally get it and i think i think you dive into something you know with regards we we talk about fixed factors and, and variable factors yeah is that right uh so no i i call it visual and, and verbal ah, so but see. yeah yeah so the fact is Things you could change. Yes. Uh, sorry, so you said fixed and variable. Fixed so, and yeah. variable, yeah. So that's right. So things we can change about the haircut and things we can't. Uh, I see. You know? So very, very smart. That's what it breaks it down now, into. Now, in terms of in terms of like because what we find, right, with with our students when they come in is they're 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 great, they learn a lot. But one thing that we have to really, really nurture them with is confidence. Yep. Confidence is like this this really, really big thing, you know, that, that people feel like it's just, there's a lot of, you know, doubt in themselves, very much like, you know, myself. Mm -hmm. How do you go about combating something so severe in, in oneself? 
That's confidence. Yeah. Because that's not something that you can easily change. And that's not something that, you know, MJ Langley can course. can come in and just, just turn things around all of sure. a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So where does confidence come from? That's that's our first question. Where where does confidence come from? Um, knowledge. Knowledge, okay. I would say yeah. uh, knowledge in terms of how much you know about a particular subject. Mm -hmm. Like you see it in people all the time. Cool. The more knowledge that they have on a particular su subject, the more powerful they can speak about something. Mm -hmm. So I would break it down into two sections again. Mm -hmm. Evidence okay. and experience. Okay. The experience of actually doing something, or yeah. if somebody's coming in for the first time, they don't have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the first one, is giving them the experience. But in order to have the experience, they first need to see the evidence. Okay, they need to see what they're doing. They need to understand it. Um, and I think, you know, I, I started off in hairdressing and I, I didn't take to it at all, funny enough. Like hairdressing, I just couldn't get my head around it at the start. And it wasn't for me not trying. And it wasn't for, it, it, in fact, it wasn't even my fault at the time. It was that I didn't have, you know, a set fundamentals, um, a terminology, a, a way of looking at hair. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of, pull this out and do this. Okay, and you're never gonna learn like that. You know, you've got to actually understand, okay, well, if I pull it at this angle, what's it gonna do compared to this angle? Right. Once you start understanding hair like that, yeah. you're gonna then build confidence. Yes. Once you build the confidence in that, then you have the chance to experience it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I can relate to that. You know, what we do in our academy is we, we essentially, we expose people to their fears. Mm -hmm. You know, exposure, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, what are you afraid of? Oh, well, I'm afraid of, you know, a model coming in for a, a haircut that wants X, Y, Z. Yeah, okay, perfect, cool. You know, we try to find that exact sort of situation and, and, and put them in on the spot and then they find, oh, well, it wasn't actually all that bad. Yeah, that uh, and sense. they've got you to fall back on at the time as well. So yes, oh, 100%, oh, definitely. Okay, so we'll talk about if somebody isn't in that situation where they haven't got somebody to learn from, Yes. then what do they do? Right, so I've been in that situation many many times that. now I've, I've done two things mm -hmm. i've faced it head on and i've shied away from it mm -hmm. what i found is when i shied away from it i never learned anything because i never tackled it in the first place yeah where i tackled it you know maybe that it was a haircut that i didn't feel confident in doing okay fine that would have been my first victim mm -hmm. so so you're but saying you you I, I i would essentially i would i, I would i would tackle this, the problem head on yeah does that make sense uh -huh. now for example, someone came in, you know, and, and, and I could see that they want something from, you know, from the waiting area, they sat, they sat down and I just think, God, I'm next. I could see that they, they're just going to be super picky or they just want something that I don't feel confident in doing. You know, like what I'm trying to say is I've shied away from it, never learned from it, mm -hmm. but there's also been times where I thought, fuck it, let's get it let's in, go let, 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 let's yeah. go for it. And then the first time I do it, maybe they might be my victim in, in the sense that, I didn't nail it as good as what I would have 10 times down the line. Mm. But if you keep tackling it head on, that's where you, you gain the experience. Does that make sense? For sure. For sure. I mean, how bad is it going to be if you do fail? Well, it, exactly. You know, I mean... It, it feels terrible at the time and it, it's not great. And it's not easy to ruin someone's haircut. No. It's not, it's not that easy. Like, you don't, you don't just like... When we talk about ruining the haircut, we talk about your guard falling off and going, Shh. yeah, you know, that's a problem. Things are fixable. Yeah. Yeah. Things, but, but mm -hmm. in, in terms of like how wrong could it actually go? I don't think it could go that, that wrong. I think the only thing that can go wrong is more so you don't pro portray yourself correctly because you're not confident mm -hmm. and therefore it instills a slight fear into the customer yeah. whereby they feel like, he doesn't know exactly what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, but he's not confident in what he's doing. I think that's the only thing that can really, really go wrong. 100%. Yeah. I mean, one of my mentors once said to me, never say no. Right. You know, when something comes through the door, yeah. even if you don't feel confident about it, just go, go for it. just go for it. And, you know, speak to the barbers around you. Pull one of them across. You know, yeah. if you know somebody next to you has got more experience in a, a set yeah. cut or something like that, bring them across and just say, how do you think I should tackle this? Because if that client then sees you do that, they're not going to have less confidence in that you. They're going to have more confidence in you. Of course. Does that makes sense? Because yeah. you're actually interested. You're showing interest in cutting their hair. Absolutely. Um, and how many barber shops do that? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Normally yeah, it's, it's they, they come in quick do, 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 and you're out. That's it. You know, what happens when you actually take an interest in somebody's hair? So your clients help, you know, I would assume that you have a, and I wouldn't doubt that you have a very successful clientele. Mm -hmm. You have a big clientele, I think, and it's kept you very, very busy and it's supported you um, among your other projects, yeah. such as, such as, um, you know, your education. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about building, you know, a clientele and starting from scratch, essentially, in a shop? How do you go about doing so? I love this question as well. I think I think it's important because you know people yeah. people are going to watch this of, of all sorts of experiences and, and some are going to have very very busy clientele, <clears throat> but it may differ in terms of how they've built it and how mm. you've built it and what you what you've done. So I can talk only really out of experience, um, and I can talk back to when I first moved back or moved to St Albans. <coughs> um, I'd given up my busy clientele in my previous shop mm -hmm. and I'd moved to St Albans. Didn't know anybody. Didn't have any clientele. Yeah. Um, and the main thing I actually done was I'd go and speak to people. Okay. You know, I'd go outside the shop and I'd ask them where do they get their hair cut. Um, oh, okay. So you, I'd, you, I'd hand a card out. So you wouldn't just sit around waiting for clients to come in and then do really, really good with that client in hopes of him returning to not, you? Not a chance. You've got to be proactive. Wow. Wow. It's, it's everything. I think you've either got to wake up hungry yeah. or, you know, what else is there? What are you just going to sit about? Yeah. Go and waste some time on Instagram. There's no point. It's, it's not an easy thing to go out and, and start asking people. But once you do it once, mm -hmm. you can do it many, many times. And and what kind of offer do you place when you go out and tout, essentially, when you go out on the street? And <clears throat> is, is it like, do you give them like a 50% off? Do you give them... <clears throat> so, I mean... Or do you sell yourself in, in, in a way that they're happy to pay a price that you're charging for, even though it's the first time that they, they come to you. So, so what I would actually do, <laughs> here you go. So what I would actually do is I would go across to them and I would just start like start a conversation basically. Um, I'd start a conversation and may, maybe even just talk about their hair straight away. I would ask them, you know, where do they get their hair cut? What, like, where are they from, whatever. Um, and then afterwards I would tell them that I'm a men's hair specialist. I wouldn't just say I'm a barber, I'm a, I'm a long hair specialist or I'm a, I'm a fade specialist or, you know what I mean? I'd, I'd really put myself out there and I'd say, oh, your, your hair looks great, but I, I feel like I could, I could do it great. Um, wow. So, you know, here's a card, yeah. here's 20% off, 50% off, whatever, you know, that's subjective, whatever they want to do. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'd literally try and pull them into the shop um, and you're wow. never going to be without clientele that way. Oh my God. Mm. I mean, it's, it's so simple. I personally have never done it. You know, yeah. the way that I've, I've always gone about doing it is, especially after you came in and, and, and taught me was, I had a fairly decent clientele, which took me ages to build. Mm -hmm. um, Santino, bless him, he's very, very good. He, he probably built one of the most busiest clientele in Bedford within a three month period. You know, he was really, really good at that. But we, we worked in a shop that was high turnover okay. and, and it was lower costs, yeah. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, I always sort of relied on, on 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 people walking in. I wasn't as brave as you, as unfortunately. Yeah, but that is. But I mean, that's one part of it. And then after that, it can be you know rebooking. Oh, of simple course. things. Oh, mate, absolutely. Simple things. Absolutely. And, and and do you find that you know using social media, um, geared towards your clientele, you know, in terms of posting stories, you know, last slot tomorrow left. Do you feel like those tactics? work 100 percent. it goes hand in hand really you know if you uh even if you take a story of somebody's haircut after they've had it done right how are they gonna feel they're gonna feel, yeah, they're gonna feel, they're gonna feel good aren't they they're gonna feel like oh, really good. oh the best haircut i could get yeah, yeah, let's yeah. put it on a story so that alone then obviously ah, yes there is that perspective as well where you see all the other barbers cutting hair mm -hmm. um and it's like kind of like a, okay cool we're done thank you here's it's x amount thank you bye bye see you again whereas Yes, you're right. If, if you do take a picture, do take a video, then they've seen that they're the only one in the shop that's had their video taken. It's more, yeah. Because it must be... It's all the extras. It all links in. Like, it's you know, it's, it's a circle I, of you do and, one and, thing and it benefits another. And I, I, now I think about it, every time I've done that, um, I've always had, like, if it was a stranger and I took a video, I always had, you know, at the till, once they pay, it was kind of like... They give me the hand, they bring me in close, thank you very much. And guess what? They do come in again. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's very it, right. It's always that. the extra, isn't it?